fired up, you fired up, yeah. I'm fired up, you fired up, yeah. I'm fired up, you fired up, yeah. I'm fired up, you fired up, what? Ah, who? Are we lemonhead flavor? <laughs> we oh, there you go, lemonhead flavor over there with the rain. May it rain when it rains, it pours. Roman rains, Roman <laughs> rain. <laughs> or no, no, no. Uh, what was it? Uh, David rains. If you don't, or whoever rains was with Nicolas Cage <laughs> played in Ghana. Sixty seconds that rains. The rains brothers. And I always liked the way that homeboy said rains. I'm mad. I'm forgetting his now because he's a black guy. That he's fantastic. Like, so I'm oh. sorry for getting your name, my friend. Wow. But yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Sure, you remember Nick Cage, the white devil himself. <laughs> hey, everybody, welcome to Dude Sweet. Dude Sweet. You you spiked Dude a sweet. lot. You spiked a lot right there. You might want to. You can fix take it. Your little, take your little. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fix it in post. <laughs> Leave it up to me to fix it in post. That's great. I need, That's a, great. I need a little windscreen for this guy. I thought I had oh. one somewhere around here, but. Oh, wow. Yeah, because you have to find like I still have the the uh, the covers for this one. Yeah, so like, I'm pretty sure something like that would help. My name is Ian Douglas Terry, and my name is Brian Keith Nelson, aka Black Seekin Thunder. Thunder. <sighs> anyway, this is a podcast. This, yeah, this is a podcast that's been going on. <laughs> what, if, what if that's all I said? This is a podcast. Bam, facts right there. This is a podcast indeed. And you know what the meaning of podcast means? It means something so that you can have a pod in which we are casting into your ear. And you put it yeah. into your ear, and we are casting into your ear the pods in your ear. That's the podcast breakdown. Now, let and me tell you where a lot of you podcasters <laughs> fuck up. <laughs> no. Your ads. No. I'm sick of your ads. I'm so... I... <sighs> I pretty much don't listen to podcasts anymore because there's just so many ads in all of them. Listen, I'm just, listen. I'm just going to hold products up while you're talking. <laughs> listen, I don't want anyone to think I'm bitch made. So I'm just going to just not that this will ever get to anybody. But I obviously say it in a respectful way. Mike Tyson, you don't need ads on your podcast, my guy. You don't. <laughs> with, you don't. With all due, with all due he's, respect. He's got to buy another have, tiger. You have the money. You don't need money. You don't need these ads. It's all. It's No, it's bullshit. It's well, bullshit. Unfortunately, we now have to take an ad break for Horny Goat Weed. <laughs> Horny goat weed. Are you an old man that wants to be horny? Horny goat yeah. weed. Horny goat weed. That's uh, some good horny goat weed. Here, do this for me. Young okay. Blacksican Thunder. <laughs> <It was tough>. <laughs> <laughs> what is the mission statement of this podcast? What is the mission statement of this podcast? Yes. We're just two dudes trying to help other dudes be better dudes. We're not professionals. This is mostly here for mental health. We want to help you be better, sweeter dudes. Yeah, and whether yeah. that's through us sharing personal stories of how we've grown, how we've improved, how we approach our own mental health, how we approach our own emotional wellness, every like it's it's everything. It's not even just mental. It's it's mental, emotional, it's physical, it's all around well being. So that way you can in these hard times, because trust me, I am a cynic, but still <laughs> in these hard times, I still try to work because I have to believe that they're like the my hard work will pay off and that there is something towards working towards. And then I can at least make something better of what I'm in now. So that's there you go. That's like that for me personally. But that's what it is. It's more so just you know help health. Make sure everyone's good. Like you know tips because this is a. It's still now people are kind of into it, but unfortunately there are people who are into it and not really of it or about it and actually yeah. live the teachings of the mental health lifestyle, which is unfortunate, but this is a, you know, we we're pretty positive over, over here. We joke. I get a little yeah. dark. We get a little dark sometimes, but it's, it's all in good fun. It's all in good fun. I'm very serious. <laughs> the most you like you, I've never seen you smile <laughs> <laughs> as you crack a smile. Um, and to you, what would the mission statement of this podcast be? The mission statement. So, Something I realized, which social media is bad. We've gone over that. We don't need one, to, that. Yeah, yeah, we don't need to discuss that again. But one kind of cool thing is I have a shitty memory. I can't remember shit. Okay. Just terrible memory. And it popped up the other day and it was a picture of us recording the first, the, the OG oh, first episode. Oh, shit. Yeah. Which was six years ago last month. Woo! 
time flies. And in the here's okay, we're gonna get real on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been going through. I don't. I don't know. Wouldn't necessarily say dilemma or a slice or strike of reality because unfortunately I've never escaped reality. Yeah. But it's just more realization of hey, I've worked a lot and really hard over the past. I would say especially ten years. And at 30, I have shit to show for it. I have nothing. I have nothing. I have skills that I've developed. I'm able to keep myself afloat. But in terms of what I thought hard work and dedication would give me and what it would produce and what I would start to, you know, see from it, it hasn't happened. Yeah. It hasn't happened. And sometimes that's the reality of the situation. Like it's not always going to go. But then also sometimes too, you have to be realistic about some things. And sometimes, like ultimate your decisions, your decisions. Yes, you continue. Can you can continue to do something and put more, invest a lot more of your time into it because it's enjoyable and you see something in it. But if it's something you are kind of always like not sure about to begin with, maybe be a little bit smart and not just be like, "I want to do it because it's fun and I enjoy it." Maybe be yeah. like, "It's counterproductive to what I want to do." And I think, uh, and just speaking for myself, is I've lived like multiple lives. Yeah, where like I feel like there's. I was doing this stuff for like a decade, this stuff for a decade. And it's, you kind of fall out of love with like playing bass in bad punk rock bands, for instance, <laughs> you kind of, there's a day where you're just like, man, I'm tired of carrying amps around. What yeah. I just I don't, do? I just don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. Like there's like, just a thing. I think you, no one should ever feel shame in that. Cause it's like fucking old Kenny Rogers said, you got to know when to, yeah. open, know when to show them, know when to walk away. And there was something yeah. else in that song. Yeah, but like it's evolving. To. It's yeah. you're gonna evolve into the next. It all depends what you do after and your yeah. mindset of it. Like because you can look at something as a failure, and to your standards, it could be a failure, or you're gonna take it as once again a lesson. Yeah, like you're gonna take it as a lesson. What are you gonna take from it? Like yeah, I'll sit here and say that I don't have much to show for it because I haven't progressed to where I want to be. However, I do have a bunch of skills. I am fairly well prepared, and I now have the ability to start working on things and prepare for the future once again, because yeah. the things I didn't have 10 years ago where I was like, damn, if I get this and then I don't have the other, I'm in the same problem and I can't get the other till this, blah, blah, blah. Now it's like, I have this and I can start building up and progressing. It's taking time, but I'm prepared enough to start doing that. So that's kind of how like, it sucks. The grind ain't great. <laughs> if anyone who's listened to this podcast, I would probably say that is the second, that probably is point number two on this podcast is that the grind <laughs> and the jobs and the nine to five is not, it sucks. It's horrible. Now, if you find a job you enjoy and it works for you, fantastic. Hell yeah. Fantastic. However, not everyone is fortunate enough to find that. And for those of us, these grinds, even though some jobs may be better than others. They're still grinds nonetheless, especially to certain artistic, creative people. Like yeah. I've been grinding my whole life and I went to an art school still. And I was like, I want to grind for this now. And it's just, it's taking a while to get there, but there's opportunity and we got to make opportunity. So you got to hang in there. Cause if not, what else are you going to do? Sit around and complain about it or do something. Well, yeah. And I mean, also don't forget that there's no like clock on it. Like there's people who, God, can we I, can we talk about that seriously? I always see those things though, where it's like this person didn't do shit until they were forty something. This person's big break was when they were fifty something. Yeah, and I I understand that, but yeah. I I think it also has to do with how people see it. When people yeah. have a certain eye of like celebrity or like say for instance a list celebrities because they're everywhere. You see them no matter like you can't stop hearing about them because that's what they're plugging in. There are plenty of other actors or, yeah, let's just say actors for this instance. There are plenty of yeah. other actors who not as publicly known, not out there, not taking all these pictures, none of this, but have been making great steady act, like have been working steadily, have been working yeah. in high name, pro just through things just on and on and on. So I think it really depends. In certain cases, I will say like it isn't a race and there's not really a time frame but unfortunately with some of us the way <laughs> we think it is a time frame because we don't know we have no control over our mortality well yeah and and at least while i'm here i would like to be happy and i would definitely like to be happy and successful and enjoy it way longer than i've had to struggle and be unhappy so that's like personally yeah. when we say like time isn't a struggle 
and and it just it there's it's same with uh like when people say money can't buy happiness i just think there's a different way of looking at it no it cannot buy happiness but it can't afford me certain things that then the can provide me yes the time and what i need for that so it's the it, it's the same with it. it's just another way of looking at it yeah at least no, I, for me i can dig that and i mean we talked about this a little bit before we started recording but uh we're friends with timmy williams from the whitest kids you know yep shout Love out timmy, timmy. Williams. Shout, yeah, out. shout out he's still out in south dakota but like a member of his group just passed away at 41 yeah, r.i.p and they were on a comeback yeah like they were doing a lot of uh streaming stuff to generate income to make a movie they mm -hmm. started pre-production on the animated movie and it's getting like, busy getting to it yeah so it's kind of balancing in your head like there's no clock on this but also i could die any day <laughs> 1000 percent. no 1000 and you know like it's unfortunately you and you've had this too but we've had a lot of people we know pass away yeah like close with i've had people who i went to school with who were a year younger than me i believe any like we, i've talked about this before but i can't remember what whatever but people who are like years younger than me i went to art school with two of them like have passed away from health yeah, years dude. apart from each other and it it's not only on just like a oh some of the best artists i've ever seen but people as people some of the best people i've ever met in my entire life like shout out corin chavez and nick thorne like r.i.p yeah. you guys are greatly fucking missed but like those Hell were yeah. the great like some of the greatest people i remember telling one of them that like you were probably one of my favorite people here uh, when we were in art school, we had this thing like open up to an underclass. And I was like, you're probably one of my favorite people. Like, and it's just, it, it was nothing against anyone else, but it's just like some people just have that where they just rate and they yeah, just, dude. they did so much. Like they, they are part of like starting the black actors guild back out there in Denver. Yeah. And they just have been spreading out and just doing more. But that's because these guys and a bunch of other people who are with them, Quinn Marchman, Ryan Fu, um, uh there's i know there's more i'm missing names and i apologize i'm not like <laughs> intentionally doing it i know but i know those core because those are the people that i was in school with and then when they started it and i was still going to dsa because i just refused i was like even if i'm not going here i have friends here this i fucking like this is where i want to be the people i like want to support are here so just seeing yeah. and hearing all this and even for a brief time being a part of it like it's dope they get to do all this and yes it continues on after them but it's like fuck they're not here yeah dude and that's, that's the heavy. thing it's just like they're not fucking here and it's hard because it's life like how many you have those stories where you have people and they're just not here anymore and we have yeah. to deal with that keep like to keep going on from it yeah it's just like using that to like fuel the fire yeah maybe that's the solution instead of like because i felt that way in the past where i'm like fuck i'm like 30 like i haven't done shit or now i'm 40 i haven't done yeah. shit you can yeah. kind of do that but instead just be like i still have time there's people that i love that no longer have that time so i'm gonna yeah. do my best yeah to i've make definitely something. definitely i've definitely <laughs> i've definitely been feeling that you know ever since p yeah so like that's just been that's been one of the hardest things just and it's you know me like i'm already impatient enough and it's never Dude, it's never even about like, oh, fame, all this other bullshit. I just want to be happy doing what the fuck I do. Dude. Like, I just told my cousin this. I was like, I don't want to, I don't, I want to get to the point where I don't wake up every day and not look forward to waking up because I hate what I do. Like, I hate yeah. what I have to do. I don't want to feel like that anymore. Like, I felt like that for way too long. And yeah, I try, dude. you try to make the best of your situation, but the goal is to get to something where it's just like, hey, the times may be stressful, may be rough. I may be stuck on a set for 18 hours. I don't give a fuck. I've done 18 hour work days and it sucked and I didn't want to do it, but I had to do it just to pay bills to get by. If it's something yeah. I can do for a living that I enjoy, 1000%. I just hope I can get to that point and actually be able to do it long enough where I can enjoy it, where I can benefit from it mentally, emotionally, because I think a lot of that would be able to help me actually heal. Because yeah. now that I'm in a place of comfort and I can actually provide for people who I stress about all the time, now I can be like, my work is paying off. Now I'm happy. Now I can start to do the things that I want to do. And even for some of the people who aren't here anymore. Yeah. It's almost like you have to compare like either the career or the artistic endeavor to a romantic relationship. 
You do. It's very it's, personal with you. Yeah. And people will get stuck in bad relationships. Yeah. Where it's, yeah. you can tell they're not having fun. The yep. person they're dating's not having fun. Yeah. And they just, they just do it because it's a habit and they just, yeah. they know how, to, they know they can work together enough to stay together, but no one's yeah. necessarily happy. About it. Some kind or, of, yeah. Think about this. They have that fear. There's fear holding them back. Of what like, happens if we, yep. if we part, what ha- am I going to find anybody? Yeah. I've had people tell me that fear. Yeah. And it's just like, it's real. It's real. It's very but like, real. But it's also one of go. those things. It's one of those things where there's a few variables because it's never just like, oh, there's this or this. Yes, there's the choices. You do it or you don't do it. But the thing is, ultimately, is it going to be better for you? Is it like, is it something that you feel like you really should do? Yeah. You know, it's something that you really have to think about. Like, how how is it going to affect you? Yeah, you know, like how has it been affecting you? What choice do you need to make to change it? You know, like it's it's ultimately our decisions to do it. We only can we may not be able to control all of our circumstances, but we do choose how we react and we choose how like our choices on how we respond to certain things or what we choose or what we say or like, all this stuff like that. Yeah, dude, like uh, walking away from comedy sucked. Yeah, but but it was. Like mentally, it was exactly the same as ending a relationship. Yeah. It was exactly the same. Like, it's yeah. like where it's just like, I'm miserable doing this. Like, I'm not yeah. really having fun. I like some of the people I'm around. Like, there's some things I like about it, but it's like, it's, you just have to walk away and it's going to suck. Yeah. Like, you know that it's going to suck mentally. You're going to yeah. go through some shit. You're going to, it's the, <laughs> I'll, I'll say this. Like, I remember quitting comedy and being like, all right, I'm done. And it's just like a breakup where then I see something on the internet and I'm like, <laughs> the fuck? And it was my friend Adam Caton Holland was doing a, a show at, at ratio and a show to leavers. And I was like, mm. okay. It's like, my okay. Stomping grounds. Yeah. It's like okay. seeing you out yeah. with a new fella. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Hey, to me, to me, it's like, do you, yeah. To me, but it's I like, do you, but it's also think, because I think you have to prepare for it beforehand. Yeah. With certain things. Yeah. You have to be ready. But yeah, dude, that's quitting. It's hard, mm-hmm. but sometimes it it's just opens the door to something else. Sometimes it's necessary. Sometimes yeah. you're putting too much focus and energy into something that where if you keep doing it, you will just be beating your head against a wall. Yeah. You need a... Even if changing your approach means leaving what you thought something was you needed to do or wanted to do, yeah. If there, especially if you have other, you know, tools or assets at your disposal, do that. Put your focus into something else. Even if it's like, hey, I like to consider myself somewhat of a journeyman. I'm a little bit like I have knowledge and almost a little bit of everything, and I yeah. can do everything well enough to where either to progress or whatever or pass by whatever all that. But sometimes you got to fall back on your strengths and just focus on that and do what really got you there because then that can then put you to a point where now you can sharpen all the other skills and tools that you need as you go along. But for now, focus on what you can. So that way that can help get you to where you need to be. And it's, it's also like, you kind of have to put things in perspective where it's like, man, if I would have never stopped playing in bands, Mm -hmm. there's so so much of my life would have been different. Probably would have never come out here. Probably would have never met you or any of my other friends. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, sometimes you just have to like, move on to the new thing to get into new things. And I think another really difficult thing to deal with is like your identity Mm -hmm. because your identity can get tied to To what you're doing, your career. It can be tied to your relationship. Like I'm this person's boyfriend or whatever. And it can get tied to like an artistic endeavor. Like Mm -hmm. my brain struggled so long to be like, what the fuck am I without comedy? Yeah. It can be a real struggle. Yeah, people would introduce me. Hey, this is Ian. He's a comedian. Like I'd be hanging out with cool band people and they'd be like, yeah, he's a comedian. He's real funny. That yeah. Way. It's like, what do they say now? Like this is Ian. He loves lasagna. Doesn't work the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean. But it's, but it's just yeah. creating the next thing and the new thing and also realizing that your identity shouldn't be tied to things. It shouldn't be. And that's yeah. going to put me as somebody who personally spent a lot of time mentally and emotionally preparing themselves to get rejected by people for acting auditions yeah. because you can't take that shit seriously. 
and you start to learn how people really are, you kind of prepare yourself for certain things. And it's like you still want it to go the other way, but you still are preparing yourself for something. Yeah. Like you, you, it's a real, it's a realism. Like you have to be realistic. Like this could realistically happen. And I like to think that way because if it's something you don't have direct control over, and even if you do, you can only control that so much. But unless yeah. you have direct control over it, there's a 50, 50 shot. It's going to work out your way. And also like, think about like kind of the way I compared it with like that last run of comedy I was doing where I was like, on salary right. and making money just to f fuck around basically yeah it was like four years and it's like that's like a long time that's like yeah. college yeah like yeah you can't, it's a good amount of time yeah and you kind of have to think like the simpsons is in like what season 30 something who no one cares anymore yeah no one cares yeah because if you just keep sorry going, simpsons fans nothing yeah. personal but nobody cares listen season 10 11 ah but pff, um but it's like all that. I know is One Piece is still going, so that's my. Thing. <laughs> it's like when the heart's no longer in the thing, you yeah. got to end it. You can't keep it you going. Got to. You got to, and then, like you were saying, it's important to have that separation. You have to know who you are, separate from what it is that you're doing. Whether it be yeah. you're an artist, whether it be just a normal job, whatever, blah blah blah. You have to separate it. You have to have that line. You can put yourself into the world, like you can give yourself all of yourself to it but you have to draw that line where it's like okay what's going to be better for me the person or for me let's say in certain instances like our instance the artist because what's good for the artist may not be good for the person and if it's not good for the person what's the fucking point in the artist <laughs> even being there because yeah. now guess what everything's a shit show i no longer have a place to live so how am i going to do the art if i have nowhere to live if i have nowhere to stay if i have yeah. none of these resources like i and, think it's very important for people to sit there and you have to be comfortable in your own skin. The same way we say that get all the help you need if you need help for your mental health, if you need to talk to somebody, if you need to get prescribed something, do that. However, it all starts with you. You have to be willing to do the work to get better. You have to yeah. be willing because we got to change and reprogram our brains. It doesn't matter um, how we're doing it. It doesn't matter if we're going to therapy. It doesn't matter if we're doing a lot of self-building, a lot of self-reflection. As long as it's all positive, we're still having to do this. So we have to put in that work. Four. And I think there's like a big, uh, like the big fantasy about a lot of the arts is that like, oh, it's, you have to be depressed. You have, it comes no. from pain and darkness no. or like it all doesn't. comedians are depressed. That was the it big doesn't. thing after Robin Williams passed away. And it's it like, doesn't. yeah, oh, man, that's a side effect. That's yeah. not what yeah. creates the shit. Hey, let me tell all you artistic kids who come from fairly easy upbringings. You don't have to be depressed. If you yeah. have a fairly normal lifestyle, that's perfectly fine. Some of us, however, this is just the best way we could get us out. For yep. some of us, it was like, oh, hey, this thing has always made me happy. So instead of going to anger management again, let me put a little bit more focus into this and try and progress some in a little bit more of a positive way and become a little bit more confident and a little more comfortable in my skin with who I am. Because more than anything, you don't get upset when people are attacking certain things unless you're comfortable in yourself because you can separate your, yourself from it. Cool. Yeah. You may not like my performance or certain betrayal of something. That's fine. It is what it is. That doesn't mean you hate me as a person. And if somebody <laughs> does hate you as a person, fuck them. Because guess what? Every There's going to be somebody who hates you for no reason. Especially, you know, I'm not going to get into all that. I'm not going to get into all the whole racial thing. But with the way I look at it, somebody's going to hate me for no fucking reason. Yeah. So what do I care? What do I care? I already told my parents how I feel. I speak my mind freely around my family. What do I care? What do yeah. I care? I'm going to be comfortable in myself. But me, who I am, I'm just open, honest, and respectful. And that's here's, just how it is. Yeah, here's something I've noticed, man. Like, I like, I'm a very introverted person. I've always known that. Yeah, and doing comedy, playing in bands, it was very extroverted. Where I had to like ramp myself up, yep, to do the thing, and yeah. like that's what it was forever. And it was like I just wanted to leave, like as yeah. soon as I was done every time. Yeah, but, that's what I do all the time. I'm like, even for Matt, yo, I'm here to wrestle, show yeah. you a good time, and I'm out. Yeah, I'm not sign nothing personal. I know you didn't come here to see me, so I'm not gonna sign nothing. I'm and not gonna go pretend like I want to meet me. I'm going home. Yeah, and that was like a big part of what drained me. Like it was just yeah. draining for so many years that like I just never found a good way to balance it. And what's happened now is like I barely talk. At the last couple jobs I've had, I was just silent. 
and I th- and I just thought it was yeah, that's just how I am. But it would really weird people out. <laughs> like I'm a, the, man, I'm gonna the, be honest with you because that's how I am. Like yeah, visual people. Anyone watching this? Thank you, first of all. Thank you, because we're just fucking like we always just made this podcast for us. If you listen, you listen. If not, whatever. One day it's gonna be catalog, and people will be like, "Oh, we should have listened when they were just starting." You should have. Yep. But just now we're here. You blew um, it. Um, I'm an expressive person. I'm loud. I'm goofy. I'm funny. All this stuff. Yeah. I just this is me. <laughs> it's not me at work. <laughs> me yeah. at work, unfortunately, just gets the grumpy professional me yeah where it's like if you don't make my job any harder than it has to be and you're not making the job harder and if this is a teamwork thing we're actually busting it like it's a teamwork thing cool i'll do my shit you do your shit i'm honestly sorry i'm not here to make friends if we connect and shit's cool great but if you have a shitty work ethic more than likely i'm not gonna get along with you because i'm here for a paycheck it doesn't go that (laughs) much more beyond that for me yeah quiet i'm calm i'm collected i throw my headphones nothing personal against anybody this is not what i would prefer to be doing this is not what i want to be doing interactions at work like i've had some awesome co-workers that i'm still same friends, they're awesome they're yeah. great yeah but like one majority... of my best oh one shout out one of my best friends too who i met through one of my old jobs was the one that fucked me over um <laughs> hit shout out john john ever i'm shouting everybody okay john Eberico. <laughs> <laughs> uh and and becky she's going through a transition last name so i'm not entirely sure but i love you guys regardless Hell they yeah. just uh the learn lemur it just opened up a new location uh somewhere near down colfax in york next episode i will have all the information or maybe in by denver, the end of this episode denver, i'm not yeah. sure in denver colorado in denver colorado they just opened a new space of the learn lemur so if you like oddities and shit go get it yeah dude. go get it and one eventually i'm gonna have john on this podcast one of these days Hell i'm gonna yeah. have him on here so but it's like the majority of interactions at the office and in like business environments are so fake to me they it's are very much fake. like hi how are yeah. you and i oh, think wow. that's why friendships and shit are so rare because so rarely can you see other people who are like aren't with the bullshit yeah. they're not with the like i'm not here to play the political structure game yo i'm here to earn a check too maybe i went to school for this maybe this is something i do but i'm just here for the money i'm not here yeah. for all this other bullshit hierarchy crap whatever then that's when you find those people it's like oh you're not like trying to do any of this nah you're not trying to do any of this oh okay cool maybe i'll see you around maybe i'll see you around and i think i've kind of started to learn that because i feel like i spent over 20 years just being a ridiculous person like uh being in the weird bands i was we were just like eventually we'll have joe mccalunas on who i was in renford with but it was like we were just a not very good pop punk band and we had a dude breathing fire hell yeah and it's just like, cause it's like, that's funny. And it's just like doing ridiculous shit where I'm starting to realize I can use all these skills yeah, in business stuff. <laughs> like it took me forever. Cause I was just such a like, man, this stuff's so corny. I just that's kind of one of the things I'm realizing is because yeah. we have to, we're finding different ways and it's the lessons where you take it. Yeah. The road kind of sucks, but it's like, I'm more prepared than the most average person. Yeah. Like, Hey, if you send me to a pitch meeting right now, I got fucking five ideas I can lay out in detail and another five more I can just ring off. And I'm pretty sure I can come up with another six if you just throw random words at me. All right. Yeah. Like that's how prepared. And- I, I've written a mask sequel in my head. <laughs> not that not that we're completely ignoring the Jamie Kennedy one. Oh, we're completely, you do that to Jamie we're, Kennedy. Nah, we're, no, no disrespect. Malibu's most wanted. Be red. Ah, 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 ah. But no, we're not doing that sorry it's it's funny too because like i feel uh, like only coming was in that movie though fuck i think like we got it we got it sorry that in is. most of my like job it's uh it's like the japanese uh saying where it's like we all have different masks we have the yeah. mask for the outside world we have the mask for the people we're close with and then the mask uh-huh. for, ourself. for ourselves and it's like to me it's like there's the job mask and then there's the friends mask and then there, there is like your own where the world will never see the darkness. Or whatever. <laughs> but like sometimes they bleed together, though. My job mask was just like quiet, got shit done, just didn't yeah. really talk. And there was like a coworker two jobs ago who was a cool dude and did a lot of cool stuff. But I, I always kind of kept what I do to my, like the things I did to myself. Same, like I, same. I wouldn't go into work and be like, I did comedy last night. Like, who yeah. fucking cares, man? Same, but yeah. Like, same. Which always led to funny shit. But uh, it was like this dude, one day we were just working and I was like, 
hey, here's a video of me getting beat up by professional wrestler Chris Hero. And he was like, what? <laughs> what the? <laughs> and then it was what like, did you oh, do? we got to talk. And now, yeah. and so we're still, yeah. But Keep in contact, yeah. Dude, it's been so funny because lately, like the job I have right now. So I have a job right now. It's awesome. It's only four days a week, but it's still full time. So it's 32 hours full time with amazing benefits. So I'm like, I can't fucking complain about it. I know. Anything. I say that I'm a 30 hour part time yeah. salary right now. I'm like, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but I'm like, Denver's expensive, I'm doing all these trips. And rather than, because I was like, oh, I got to tell my boss I need more money or I need more hours. And it's like, why put that? This, this is going great. I don't need to put that there. So I just started applying for part time jobs. I'll just pick up another part time job because working from home is pretty friggin' easy. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but it is. so I've been interviewing for these jobs and it's always like, man, it's interviews have gotten really weird. Like they've, they've <laughs> gone, to, they've gone to like where you video yourself just answering questions from a, like a thing. Mm -hmm. It's like the, so they don't even talk to you. You're just talking to yourself. This sounds to me like when they pay people to eat a large amount of food. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, dude. I would yes. No, no, no. Eater. Yeah. 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 <laughs> awkwardly, awkwardly answer these questions and lie to us about but why I you guess want this position. Beg if, for this minimum wage. If, well, if we had a company, it would be an easy way rather than reading. Cause when you read like a, um, why can't I remember the resume? <laughs> remember the name of resume, a CV, uh, Reading those, you don't know shit. Like at the events job I worked at, one of the dudes, he was like, hey, they have me going through all these resumes. Man, I don't know. Like, because people could lie. People could. Yeah, you never know. And so you don't know what kind of person they are until you get that interview. But this way, like you can watch a video, like them talking and answering things without mm -hmm. having it, like just for, before you even interact with them. And I'm like, that's pretty cool. It's very weird, though. This is but exactly I, what I would do on the interview. Like, all right, so I yeah. know you got some questions for me. <laughs> but so I did, did this one and uh, like I did, well, I did three. And the first one, I'm trying to be professional guy. All right. Yep. Here we go. But still being pretty honest because like with the stuff I do, it's just about empathy and helping people. But uh, second one, I was a little more loose. The third one, I was just like, it was one of those like very standard, like what, uh, what kind of customer service skills do you or customer support skills do you have? And oh, so yeah. I, I kick on the video and I was like, I was in a bunch of pop punk bands for a decade. I did comedy for another decade, which I consider to be extreme customer support. Yeah. I just, I just like said a bunch of random stuff that I thought was funny. Fuck Guess it. which one I got an interview from? The that fucking one. <laughs> one you just started rattling shit off on. Just like fuck it, here we go. And the the gal. If was not like, anything, they're like, I want to meet this. Yeah. Fucking guy who thought I, to apply to this job? Yeah, dude. And I figure that's my new in is just say all the weird stuff I've done, and then just be like, oh, but also I'm a very normal, yeah. get shit done person. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty. I'm pretty. Not to toot my own horn, but it's pretty above average when it comes to some shit. <laughs> I get shit done. I work hard, and there's a reason. Why I can enjoy four day weekend sometimes. Yeah. So, you know, it's Dude, all I know is anytime I've interviewed with a woman, mm -hmm. I get the job. Anytime it's a dude, I feel like I get the job 50% of the time. You know what's funny as you say that now that I just for some reason that just triggered me? Most of uh, healthcare professionals in my life have been women. Yeah. Like my main doctors, the doctors I have down here. I think the only male doctor I've had was a dentist. Yeah. Maybe. It's interesting, right? I like, I feel like my energy and a goes well. gastroenterologist, that's it. Yeah. My energy goes well with female energy. Yeah. With dudes, I feel like I'm just like more withdrawn. Where I'm just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think it's different. I think it depends yeah. on the energy that people are bringing. Because with me, like, it doesn't necessarily matter personality type. It matters energy that like you bring yeah. that you just kind of come with. Cause like I've been around people who typically you, you, you might, might want to be more a little bit aware of who you hang out with. Yeah. But me just by circumstance, I'm with somebody who just uh, whatever the fuck, whatever some small dumbass connections, the energy is cool. They chill. Yeah. They no, no aggression. No, there's no shit like that. They just chill. They calm. They still talking shit. Having fun being jokey, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. 
And then it's just like when you go out and then there's people you don't know and they just approach you with like just this aggressive energy. And it's like, I have no idea who you are. Yeah. You could be very well intended, but I've also seen shit where it could be very ill intended. And yeah. I just don't know you. So at that point. You know, something that kind of ties into that, that I've been thinking about, like one of my biggest regrets, I try not to have very many regrets. It's hard. We're human. Yeah. But like, uh, I wish there were so many ways I approached comedy where I was basically just ripping off like punk rock and wrestling and a lot of my influences. Mm -hmm. Cause that's what we all, that's the way you make cool things happen instead of copying Louis CK or whatever person's big at whatever time. Yeah. You're like, what else can I do? And yeah, I much. wish I would have tried to emulate, uh, the culture of professional wrestling more than the culture of comedy. Mm. Be because yeah there's problems with both whatever yeah but the, the like respect and the you know that you're all and i think it's because comedy there's we're not protecting each other at all there's no like you don't need to trust the person yeah, yeah i was thinking about that i was like man i wish i like there were people i was a dick to and it's like uh, i wish i wasn't such a dick but i was also drinking too much and had other stuff going on i mean but yeah like, like life happens when you can admit that you're a dick and then at the same time it's just like it happens, man. Like, yeah. not everyone's going to get an apology. Not everyone is looking for an apology. Not everyone's going to give you an apology. Like, yeah. You but know. it's like, I want to start doing that in all of my, like, in every job I have and anything else. I want to have, like, a very, like, very, like, polite, like, I'm here to help. I'm here to protect you. I'm here to, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, about that all day. I'm like, yeah. hey, yo, I'm here to bust my ass for the team. If you need yeah. help, let me know. We'll get this shit done. I'm here to get this. However, when I hit my time, I'm the fuck <laughs> out of here because that is what we agreed to. Now, yeah. if anyone takes issue with that, feel free to speak to my boss about that. However, me and my boss have this understanding. Yeah, and he dude. said it works for him, it works for me. And guess what? Now, in that free time, I get to be more creative. I think that's that's kind of the thing too is you prove your worth. Yeah, it's what it is. Show you that you are you can actually work. Prove bust your yeah. ass. Prove that you're an asset and mm -hmm. like you can like kind of pick and choose and adjust things as yeah. you want. There's too many. Cool. There's too many people who don't understand that that when you get an opportunity, it's not that's not the time to slack off. That's the time to be like, this is why you gave me this opportunity. Yeah. Because you never know what else comes from that. It may land you a permanent job. Cool. That's op opportunity for now. You got a permanent job. Now you get probably a little bit of raise with it. Maybe you get benefits. If not, find another job. If it doesn't treat yeah. you well, deuces. You can always find something like that. But if it's like, something where it's like it's doing it well and it's it's like, okay, we're going to start you out with this good salary. Yeah, we're going to start you out with benefits. We're going to start you out with this like PTO, blah, blah, blah. You can't come in there slacking. What the fuck? Like, no how way. ungrateful do you look? Some places that shit may slide depending on who you know, but sorry, but for realistically, for someone like me and probably is still somebody like you, unless yeah. you got the connections, what are you doing that shit for? Get in Dude, there and get your ass to work and prove like, yeah, this is why I'm here. And I'm not saying you have to prove yourself to anybody, but if you get something, you secure your position. That's what you, it doesn't matter what you do. Even as an artist, take, take a nine yep. to five job out of this. Take it as an artist. Yo, if you get put on the showcase, you better put your shit in that showcase to be the draw of that showcase because everybody else should be coming that way. Everyone should be going out there to aim. And there, I, I don't, in art, I don't believe that you're like stepping on anyone by simply just full on just displaying your talents or uniqueness or whatever. Hey, everyone just is going to have to do something different. Yes. Something is going yeah. to stand out. Someone's may not stand out. I've been on the side where shit hasn't stood out. It's fine. It happens. Sometimes the performance just doesn't happen that night. Sometimes it does it, 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 whatever it is, you have to go out there. And every time you go to something, it doesn't matter if it's a showcase, a small performance, a small set, whatever you got to go out there and be like, Hey, I'm going to go out there and at the very least you got to have fun and be willing to go out there and have such a good time that you're like, I'm going to go do well, but yeah. you can't, you can't just go like, Oh, I got this cake. I'm not yeah. worried about it. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to prepare for it. I'm not going to give it a second thought until I get there. Like you can't do that. You got to treat it with respect. Like I said, you got to treat it as more than something else. If you want something else out of it. Yeah. That's a good point. Like, uh, yeah. Like I had a one-on-one -on -one with my boss recently and uh like i feel like in the past with jobs i would express my frustration like, yeah like, oh, and it's like a lot of negativity and i felt like that was when i'd vent the negative stuff uh -huh. and it, it never really it seemed to kind of like make things not as good 
Yeah. And so with this one, I'm just trying to be positive and I'm trying to find solutions to be like, this thing keeps happening. It's very frustrating. I'm not sure how to fix it, but I think we should try to figure out how to fix it. Mm -hmm. So that's been like my new approach with a lot of stuff. And so, and I was, I thought I was just, I was rambling mostly when I was talking to her and she was like, this is the most since your interview, I've like heard you talk. And she's like, you have a really good voice. Has anyone ever told you that? You should, you should, <laughs> see, multiple people I work with, you should do like a podcast. Or I hear I'm, that all the I'm, time. Yeah, And I'm always like, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. I used maybe to, I'll do one. Yeah. And but, I used uh, to, I used to get, you should do something in radio and then I would get, you should do voice acting or you should do acting. Stuff yeah. Like that. And like, but, trust me, I'm trying. Yeah. But then she was like, I think we should like look into getting you into like a leadership role and talk about like growing and that blah, 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 which, Maybe that's just what she tells everybody to kind of Maybe. keep people motivated. But Maybe. But see, the thing is, too, like, there are jobs out there who are being, like, they're willing to find those kind of people who are willing to dedicate that time to stuff because you yeah. never know. There may be a job who, from the outside, it just looks square as shit, but they're looking to try and do something creative to branch out. You might be someone who has the business smarts and the creative mindset to help them do what they need to do to now branch out in this creative yeah. and new digital world. You have to be more original. Yes, there's hard to be original. I like original ideas are starting to dwindle because everyone can do almost anything now in this day and age. However, put yeah. your spin on it, do your own thing. Like I guarantee you, no one is going to design the exact same thing with their own hand. Someone no can design something completely different. Like it's going to happen every single time. So don't yeah. ever think that, Oh, because I don't know if I can ever make an original idea. Like you can't go out there. You have to just go out there and do it. Yeah. Um, Here's something else I was thinking about recently. Uh, and I think like in me trying to be a better dude and a good dude and like taking a lot of advice from different things, I think sometimes I go too far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, oh, like you like you feel like you're making up for lost times. Like, yeah. no, now I have to aggressively be this way to like but, make sure I stay this way. So here's two examples. One's like just one that always happens. And it's so I walk out of my apartment walk into the grocery store. I might've told this story before, but I love, it's a fun story. Let's go. Come on. Walk into the grocery store and there's a nice lady in front of me. And I'm like, I walk fast. I know I walk fast. Cause I got little short legs and a little <laughs> torso. Yeah. So it I'm like, I'm like, fuck, I don't want to like walk up on her. So I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, chill out. I'm going to walk a little slower. And then I start to get anxious. Cause I'm like, well now I'm noticeably walking slower. Now I'm doing this. So I'm like, I'm going to cross the street to the other side and then get to the grocery store. So I do that. I notice the weight where if <laughs> and I feel like the woman's paying attention to me other side. And so now we're kind of going parallel and then I'm like, fuck, she's going to the grocery store. <laughs> like it's going to look like I did something weird. And then yeah. so I'm going to cut walk. you off before yeah. you get to safely. And I was just like, son of a bitch. <laughs> like there's no way. And there's if no I would have just, if I would have just done my normal, just walking. Yeah. Would have been fine. She, like she, she probably didn't notice any of it, but in my mind, it's like, I just made this weirder from yeah. trying to like overthink and be yeah. overly considerate as a, as a, per, as a man of color, who's over, who's like overthought yeah. this, especially with like nothing against you all, obviously, but white women around, if I don't yeah. know you, then like, if I'm behind you or something, I don't go out of my way. Anything. Cry. I just, <clears throat> I just let something out yeah. loud. No, I just let you know. I'm there. I have my phone. Like I turn up the brightness. If it's dark, yeah. let you see, like, just, you can see me. There you go. I'm yeah. uh, visible away from you. If you look back and I see you, I'll give you away. We're both on the same page where it's like women have enough to deal with. They don't need yeah. to deal with me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. First of all, you if you see me, you ain't got to worry about me. Bother you, harassing you, or making yeah. your day any rougher than it is. Because I'm just usually, if I'm in public, I'm trying to do whatever I'm trying to do and get the fuck out. If yeah. I'm sightseeing, I'm staying out the way. But still, like it, that's it. That's not the case with everybody. But, you know. <laughs> so here's, here's the newest example of this. <clears throat> so... My team that I work with, the mm -hmm. startup company I work for, uh, there's two men, that's including me, and about a dozen women. Yeah. That's our team. Yeah. I love it. It's awesome. Oh, uh, I feel like we talked about this. Does he yeah, send? And, and also, like, it's demographically all over the place. It's great. Yeah. But I've noticed, like, because my boss is like, yeah, you're kind of quiet. Like, you should talk more. And in my mind... I think of the classic Eric Dodorian bit. <laughs> Shout out Eric Dodorian. Shout out uh, Eric Dodorian. Funniest comedian in the world. Oh uh, my God. Uh, but uh, he's like, something about, men, be little, be little. <laughs> so in my mind, I'm like, I'm letting these, 
these wonderful women. I just imagine talk. his voice doing yeah, it too. Oh little. man, be little. And so I'm like being little and I'm listening and I'm trying to help and I'm being little and I'm like, it's probably weird that I'm doing I should just be like me. I should just, just be, be like, you. hey, yeah. So yeah. I think that's the biggest, especially for us white woke people that are trying too hard. Yeah, just, just be, be yourself. Just be yourself, man. Like everybody, yeah. look, everybody's goofy. I don't care what the color of your skin yeah. is. Everybody's goofy. Like there is, there is, it's the same. It's the same. Yeah. Everywhere. Like you're the gonna same. make things weirder by <laughs> yeah. doing this. Like, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, trust me, you're gonna find that. You're gonna find that. Other than besides a lot of ignorant old teachings, because they didn't have knowledge back then, a lot of people have a lot of the same shit in common. Yeah. So it's just we need a lot of unhealthy and ignorant shit needs to be unlearned by everybody. Yeah. Just Can need I, to accept that, yo, this day and age where all gotta everybody has to progress. So everybody just progress. Yeah. And if it ain't doing you no personal harm, like trying to personally kill you in your kitchen, yeah. Then what the fuck do you care? Honestly, just be yourself and try to help others. That's yeah, all yeah. and don't be a, and don't be a dick. And don't be a dick. The third the third mission statement of Deuce Week Podcast. Don't be a dick. Yeah. Don't be a That's, dick. That should be the subtitle instead of hell yeah, suck it. No, just like, don't be a dick. Yeah, suck it, but don't be a dick. <laughs> <laughs> so I did something huge today. Oh, let's fuck. I love when you break news on this. Let's go. Yeah, it's not buying rollerblades. I got the rollerblades. I haven't been able to rollerblade because the air quality. So we're bad. already hacking the planet. It's fine. Yeah. Um, I got my hair cut at a barber shop. Wow! Yeah, wait, what kind of barber shop though? You gotta tell me. I'll get this. into it. It's awesome. Oh, oh, it. Okay, let's go. Story time. So, like, I basically have been cutting my own hair for a long time. Same. Z's. I'm aggressively Midwestern and super frugal. Where I'm like, how much do haircuts cost here? Forty dollars? No, get fucked. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm just, like, I'm just depressed. Okay, now. I don't really care. I can do that myself. Like that and plus, and I've got, I got really good at it. At least for my hair, I know exactly what I want to do. Yeah. But it was also like just a pain in the ass. Oh yeah. To where I'd conscript whatever person I was dating into like, okay, you have to help me with the back. <laughs> and I think the first time it's like a fun and cute thing. They're like, Oh, I've never cut anyone's hair. Yay. Yeah. And then like the next time I asked, they're like, Oh, oh, you know, you could go to a barber shop. Yeah. You got a barber <laughs> shop for that. And so, but see me, any partner I'm with, I'm like, you know, I don't have the barbershop excuse because I'm not taking my shirt off at the barbershop and having them shave my back before I wrestle. Yeah. So now yeah. you got to do it. Yeah. I don't have that excuse anymore, but now made, it's a habit. So guess what? It's got to. I made hey, Melody shave If you don't want the back. hair on the back, young lady, you got to shave it yourself. Dude, I thought there was hair on my back, but apparently there isn't. Like she, she was like, no. And I'm like, I've seen hair when I look over my shoulder and it's just like wispy. You got your little, yeah. yeah you got your little, uh, what do they call it? Peach fuzz on your shoulders. Yeah. But, uh, and I'm so hairy, I can see the bald spot in my shoulder. <laughs> like, that's, the, that's the soundbite clip for this. So, and here's, uh, so here's the other thing is barbershops, like for dudes, I have friends that work in them. It's awesome. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Same with tattoo. It's, it's become the same as tattoo culture where it's like very cool. It's been very, it's been vintage. pretty, I mean, I don't know about certain ones at least, but I know at yeah. least in certain communities of brown culture, barbershops have always been like the community center. Yeah, point where see, popular. I wish white people had that. I guess you'd breweries have a little, or that. You, you'd purposely have a bodega, like in certain areas, you purposely yeah. have bodegas next to the barbershop because yeah. shit be popping off at the, bar at the barbershop. So shit go pop off over there at the bodega. Like people waiting for haircuts and they got kids with them. You take them to the bodega and shit while they go and get their hair cut and all this stuff. Like that's just that's just what it was. It was a communal. Yeah. It was like a community thing. So it wasn't was, always fucking great clips or whatever these other little sports zazzy, clips. Yeah, whatever all this other little zazzy like, hi, my name's Cheryl. What are you kind of <laughs> cut you want today? Like all that kind of shit. What no offense to any Cheryl. Cheryl today? <laughs> no offense. To what the fuck did Cheryl do to you, man? I don't know. So. I don't know. So the nice gal I'm dating was like, uh, he started saying I should go to a barbershop. I'm punk rock. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> and I'm also no, it's true. And I'm that's also true. a dick. Punk like rock. A dick. And I'm a yeah. dick. Which yeah, are it, sometimes the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> and my mom, like, we went and visited my parents. It was great. Yeah. When Melody went. It was a fun time. But my mm -hmm. mom was even like, I kind of learned that anytime I tell him to do anything, that would make him be like, nope. <laughs> 
<laughs> nope. <laughs> that was always like anytime nope. I was told to do anything, I was like instantly because hey, against guess it. what? If I wanted to do it, I would have done it already. Yeah, I know the options there. Oh, I know the options so, there. But if I really wanted to do it, I yeah. would have done it already. So here's like the fun, the the very like revealing thing of that is we're there. My mom's like, "Man, your hair's uh, getting really long." And I was like, "Yeah." And then Melody's like, "I told him he should get a cut." My mom's like, ah, "I've been telling Doug he needs to get his hair cut." And then so there was this whole like father like son. There was like a whole month long process where my mom because my mom cuts my dad's hair. My mom used to cut my hair. Uh-huh. And she's that's where I learned most of it, where she's trying to get me to steal tips from my new barber for her. But uh, ah. but my dad had the exact same reaction where he's like, well, I don't want to spend that much money. Here's the thing. In Columbus, Nebraska, a haircut's $15. Still too much money. Dude, that's, <laughs> I, I throw Still. that. But yeah, like, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a cheap Mexican. We used to, we used to fucking wake up at 8 a.m. That was how much just, I tipped today. We... we, we no, no, we no. We would wake up and we would get our heads cut in the backyard yeah. before it got hot, and then that's pretty good. Go for anyways, a shower, go like brush off, shower off, and then go play out. So then my mom said, uh, "She's like, yeah, he went online and he researched all the barber shops and their reviews. It was so weird." And then I was just like, "That's exactly what I did." Yeah, <laughs> like like father, like son. Yeah, and then I realized I was like. There's three hair salons in my neighborhood, like all right. One's right yeah. there. One's right there. One's right there. <laughs> yeah. So I looked him up. One was a very fancy hair salon for fancy gals and uh-huh. uh, probably fancy boys. And I was hey, like, whatever. Nah. I was like, nah, that's not for me. The next one was like a very hipster hip chain where there's one in New York, one all over the place. And I was like, eh. Mm. Third one is pretty new. There's a giant snake painted on it. It's right across the street from me called okay. serpent and sage which normally okay white people, white people <laughs> i don't know why all of our businesses had to become one word and one word but whatever shout and out my, herbs and arts <laughs> yeah and so i look at their instagram everyone's like tattooed cool all the dude haircuts are mullets because that's what all the boys are doing right now hey and i was like in whatever guys yeah and i was like you know what i can book this online super easy it's right across the street done done so i go there today go in the salon and they're like oh yeah your appointment's with whitney she's out back and i was like all right and we go okay. through the salon and then there's like this outdoor area with seating and stuff and then there's this little door it goes in this amazing like backroom barber shop it's just yeah. super cool oh yeah. yeah and there was two nice gals gave me a haircut and here's what happened i was like in my mind, I was like, I've been cutting my own hair for so long. It's going to look they're like that. I had this in my head. They're going to make fun of it. They're going to think I'm stupid. Yeah. I just had that in my head. So I was like, yeah, I don't know if you can tell I've been cutting my own hair. And she was like, no, you haven't. She was yeah. like, no way. She was like, you did a really good job if you did. And I was like, yeah. I just hold up a mirror that I think is supposed to be a cocaine mirror that, that was, <laughs> was part of the band's merch. And I just yeah. would do it myself. Yeah, sure. So apparently I've been cutting my own hair flawlessly. Yeah. I've been doing like the first few times you do it, you don't get it down. Like you kind of fuck up. But if you stick to it and do it well enough and you know, and you're not trying to go for anything complicated. Yeah. You nail that because you know when to hold like a certain hair part of your hair up, you know where your cowlick is if you fucking have one. So you got to hold it the opposite side and then you got to switch the shit back around. Like, you know, the perfect thing that you got to do with it. And I feel and shout out. It's it's always good to get that affirmation. It's like, yeah, don't look at that. Look at that. I can't do the fade shit. I I can't do do the fade either. If I could, if I didn't have this old man shit in this fucking patch right here. Yeah. I was, I was, I wanted to fade the mohawk, but I can't do it. So guess but, uh, what? I guess I'm not spending money on shit again. Yeah. And listen, it was, it was expensive and I tipped heavy, but like, I realized I was like, man, this is, it's just nice. It's nice. And plus like the energy, it was, she was yeah. awesome when he was awesome. And then there was a girl, a younger girl, like I think just observing maybe. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know. how. Yeah, that, but that's the thing. It's know. social. Like you haven't, that's a social thing you haven't done, but it's yeah. a good, like controlled social environment. And can, can we also point out that like the fact that barber school and salon school is like way more structured and strict and expensive than like cops have to go through and how insane that is. <laughs> Yeah, I would, I would dare, I would, I would dare to say that these uh, hairdressers and barbers go through more stress and handle Way it better more. than a lot of these um, <clears throat> serve <laughs> and protect 
badged. I salute, I salute the hair people. Yeah. But the energy. Wow, like, shout out hairspray. Wow. It was, it was, it felt good. The young gal was talking about all this thing. She's going out, going to all these bars. And the gal that cut my hair is 38. She's like, I go to bed at eight. And I'm like, yes, here we go. Like, this is, I want to see this. This is my crew. This is my crew. And then we started talking about professional wrestling and Stone Cold and The Rock. And it was just a oh, wonderful man. time. See, and like you the- don't, you, you, you found your version of the version of the yeah. black barbershop. Yeah. <laughs> you found your version of black barbershop. Hell yeah. You, that's like, a great experience to have. Give, give me an older, heavily tattooed person that likes. Yeah. Cool. 1, and, and she was like, I think now's the time where everyone finally is embracing that the nerdy things that they liked when they were kids. Yeah. Because cool. so many yeah. people got like socially ostracized for that shit yeah. and they're like oh you like like this like and because back there was certain bit the shit back then but now nerds will whoop your ass yeah i wish yeah. you would fuck with me yeah <laughs> guess what i was nine years old and neo inspired me to start doing some karate shit so now there i know g can do and i can whoop your ass like that <laughs> that that's the kind of shit that now you're dealing with because guess what? So, now he's calm and peaceful. He's doing <laughs> IT. He's making a lot of money, but you fuck with him. He's going to whoop your ass. Yeah, dude. He's got swords. Yeah, man. Ask to see his sleeve. I guarantee. Wait till y'all see. I'm getting a werewolf on my shit. I'm getting a werewolf <laughs> tattoo. I'll so figure out put, where my centaur is going to go. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to put like a bow on this story. So when, yes. I, fir- when I first got there, it started raining. Mm-hmm. Went through that little outdoor area. Got in there. Hey, I was going. Yeah, let's yeah, do yeah. this. Pouring rain, like <laughs> insane pouring rain, and they're just being like, "Whoa!" And she's like, "You don't have to like go very far." I was like, "I live across the street. I'll I'll jog. I don't care." Yeah, it's like I'll do whatever. Pouring, pouring. The second the haircut's done, it just stops and the sun comes out. <laughs> that was a spiritual <laughs> moment. That legitimately happened where it, we were just like, "Okay." <laughs> That was, you know what that was? That was, <laughs> that was a level up. That was entering next level. Yep. Where I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll probably <laughs> still give myself a little bit of a cut sometimes, but the rest of the time, she's a fresh hair, a fresh haircut was the one objective you had to do on like, uh, on, on like a main story quest yep. that you went and did all the other side missions, and you were like, I'm not getting this fucking haircut, <laughs> and you did every side mission you thought you couldn't do, and you finished it all, and you're like. Fuck, I have to get a haircut if I want to do the rest of the story now, even though I'm here at level like 97. I'm going to put capped. points. I need to I'm, put I'm some pretty points. much a one hit kill. I'm God mode <laughs> without cheating at this point because I've done every single. <laughs> side I need to quiz. put more points into my legs not hurting. <laughs> oh, yeah. Leg days yeah. or what? Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. I went hiking by myself, went to a cool little area between Conifer and. Uh, <laughs> Um, goddamn evergreen. Okay. And, nice. Uh, yeah, it was nice. Did a little hike. There were a bunch of kids and families. So I ended up going way up above and way around. Yeah. Like fuck all that. Yeah. It was nice though. It was a nice little spiritual thing, but next day my goddamn knees. Oh man. Yeah. But whatever, whatever. That's rough. We gotta, we gotta wrap this up. We talked about quitting, how quitting can be good. Yeah. We how it can be. About, I forgot what else did I, t- I talk about? Haircuts. <laughs> haircuts i got down the three um what are they the three laws of the podcast i guess there you go i forgot what the first two were but i know number three is don't be a dick yep don't be a dick it's just the number one rule for life <laughs> when when the editor me goes back and edits this they'll they'll pull out the uh what we go. all said and they'll put it into the description but yeah man can I tell you about what I'm into right now? Yeah, man. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get it. Let's <laughs> fucking get it. So that last podcast we did, we talked about like the creative plateau. We yeah. talked about like how hard it is to like get the ideas moving, how to get them out. And so that's been like a big goal of mine because I was like, I have tons of extra time now because I work at home where I'm like, the things are around me. Sometimes yeah. I can be a detriment, but sometimes it's like, I have no excuse not to. And you can use it to your advantage sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So I started like, I'm going to bust out a YouTube show where I'm going to go through like weird history moments. Nice. And also probably review awful movies. Cause I realized I have like a hundred terrible eighties movies on my computer. And I was like, why did I download all of these can i do that please because i've been <laughs> wanting to review bad movies and especially if i've never seen them before come on we were talking about but, doing something like yeah. that anyway and that might work with us being able to do this like yeah but so I'm, i've started to like 
where it's going to be scripted out. I don't want to be in the videos, maybe at the end or something, but I, I've taken so many YouTube videos that are just these like 15 minutes. Here's a bunch of interesting stuff about this. Here's a bunch of interesting stuff about this movie. No, love yeah, that. yeah, yeah. All that. So, shit. I love that shit. Give yeah. me the facts. Give me the and there's, facts. There's been so many like random historical events where I was like, man, why isn't this a movie? And so it's like, I'll just talk about it. I'll just put, make a little thing, put it yeah. out there. So yeah. I've started working on that. I started a second podcast, which That's I right. feel, I feel it's more of like a DJ experience than a podcast. And it's, okay. a, it's only on Spotify because, only. because it, it's basically, it's called cool shit with IDT. And what it is, is I I'll play songs and then I'll talk about them and I'll tell stories around those usually or that they're like these things remind me of and i'm just trying to one of the biggest joys i get is showing people cool new things that they're not aware of yeah love that like anytime i'm in a relationship like even friendships it's like you haven't seen that fucking movie yeah it's like you gotta watch that you gotta watch this oh you'd be really into this show and like oh you should check this out yeah and i think for me it's just like such a good bonding thing and like with Cool shit was a comedy show back in the day. And one of my favorite things about it was I would just be like, I'm just going to play a bunch of weird wrestling, like Japanese wrestling videos. Yeah. People would be like, what the hell is this? And, I'd be and like, then people would come down before the yep. shows and they yeah. were like, I guess we're here for comedy, but this wrestling's on. Yeah. Well, let's sit here and watch this and make fun of it or silly, yeah. whatever. And, and then, then with the ratio shows, I'd be like, it's so lame before shows that it's just quiet and everyone's just kind of sitting yeah. there. What the so fuck? I started making these YouTube video compilations of just different <laughs> cool weird videos that i liked and that was like yep. i love that more than the actual comedy show 1000 <laughs> so, yeah so this is like a new version of that where it's like i'm gonna eventually i'll have guests on and have like some themes but i think for now it's just like here's five songs i'm gonna talk it's like under an hour mm-hmm. and with spotify it's like the song, if it's playing and you like it, you can click it and it goes right to like the artist and stuff. So it's kind of cool oh, how nice, they integrated nice. all that. Nice. But yeah. Cool shit with IDT. On cool shit with IDT. Spotify. On motherfucking Spotify. Check it out, Joe. I got to <laughs> listen to it now. <laughs> yeah. What are you into right now? <laughs> oh, man. Let's see. Um, I have probably like five notepad windows open. And it's just various ideas of what I'm working on, one of which is um, a script that uh, I will be working on. So, yeah, I'm getting a lot of that stuff down, which is it's good because now I'm working out like workshopping just a lot of ideas. So I'm really just dedicating a lot of time to yeah. writing. Um, now with that, will become more time to start producing sound engineering for certain things to get like atmosphere and all this stuff to make it more dramatic. So that way it's not like just me sitting here just being like reading dialogue into a microphone it's actual like effects so that way it's pretty much like with a book when you read a book you get the descriptions and stuff but you make it up how it is in your own head yeah. with this, it's gonna be you hear the story and then i want to give enough detail in the sound so that way you can make up the image in your mind so that way if i'm describing a ship you know that there's a ship and it's but it's not a specific one it's whatever you can make up in your head i always believe yeah. people submersing themselves in that makes it better so just giving more of that those audio details with it so making it a true audio drama uh, like just working through all those details with that. When I get stuck in that, um, I just don't mind losing. Sometimes it's only 10 minutes. Sometimes it's an hour because Bloodborne just whoops my ass. So I just been <laughs> playing Bloodborne. So Bloodborne, it's fun. It's enjoyable. It's frustrating because it's one of those games where it's like, I have to actually sit here and dedicate time to strategy. <laughs> I just haven't done that in a while. But for me, it's good because then with that, I get the itch out to game, but I'm not there super long. And it kind of helps me focus to where like I get through something and then now I'm like, oh, shit, I had to do so much focus. I didn't know I can get that shit done. Then I'm like, oh, I have another idea. So, yeah, dude, dude, um, there's a really there's a new that. game that's exactly like the civilization games Uh huh. called a uh, humankind. Okay. Those games destroy my life because I can Dude. sit and play them for like an entire day. Um, yeah. An entire day. Oh, where I'm man. like, I started out as cavemen. Now I'm space fighting. Also, I'm uh, the nation of Mexico. Let's go. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, other than that, I uh, just binge watched Harley Quinn. All the cartoon? That shit rules. show is fucking HBO awesome. Max, Harley Quinn. That show is awesome. 
Listen, fantastic. former Crom Comedy Festival comedians Ron Funches. I'm saying Ron Funches is fucking king. Sure. And, <laughs> yeah, and Rory Scovel is in there as a couple like random characters. Yeah, it's just random characters yeah. and shit. Yeah, it's Shout it's out. all fucking Kelly Cuoco is Harley Quinn. I was like, holy yep. shit, that's. She does a really good job as like an animate. And the voice actress, is it Jesse? I'm sorry. I Jesse Bell, maybe? The voice actress of Poison Ivy. Fantastic. So good. Fantastic. So good. It's a great show. Everyone in that show is great, Dr. Psycho. Yep. Play, play. All of it is great. Uh, I, like, re- I love how they anyone everyone watch it. Spoiler alert. I love and hate because he's one of my favorite villain characters ever. But I love how they just shit on Bane the whole show. Like, <laughs> they make him seem like he's so stupid. They yeah. make him seem like he's so weak. He, he <laughs> it was, deserved it after the uh yeah. yeah, after that one movie where he was too much of a badass with a great accent. Oh what, They're Tom like, Hardy? Time to, yeah, time to bring Bane back to Earth. Yeah, it's time for Bane to once again <laughs> be brought back. Oh, James Ad- 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 James Adomian's the voice of Bane. I'm pretty sure on that show. Oh yeah, yeah? nice. Yeah. He's a great comedian too. No, 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 that's great. But Bane, look out, y'all. I don't know if y'all really know about Bane, dude. But I've been I really listening, fuck with Bane. Like if I've been you ask me, to the hardcore band Bane. <laughs> No, she- <laughs> yeah, that's a classic hardcore. Like, band. Yo, honestly, right now, right now, if you were like, give me. Give me your comic book, like character pair right now for like Go. a tag team. Spawn Bane right now. Let's <sighs> fuck. Let's fucking destroy everything. Can I give you mine? Are there fl- yeah, yeah, please, one thousand percent. Let's go. Wolverine and Lobo. Woo! It's a bad pair. Just two dudes smoking cigars. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah! One thousand percent. One thousand percent. Let's give the shout out. Shout out. Project Dash Nerd.com. <laughs> Project Nerd is a great website, mm-hmm. great for community all, with all podcasts your needs. for all your nerdly. Did we make that up or did they make it up? I think we might have made that up. All right, where's my check? <laughs> 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 I don't think they even use it if we made it up. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't, I don't, we might just be saying it. We just say shit. I don't even yeah. care. At this point. Shout out, Iggy. Shout out, Project Nerd. Yep. Uh, we, I do, so I was going to build us a whole website. But the, I've been thinking about a website. But what we have for the podcast right now is perfect. It's just yeah. the anchor website. It's just like yeah. here it is. Here's the episode. Check it out. Yeah, yeah. Just and visual I, links and stuff like that. Maybe yeah. when we actually start, like, because I like we're both venturing into our own side projects while doing yeah. other stuff as well. Because we, I imagine, we're still just going to be working together more yeah. and more. So like at that point, we would need a website. But then we'll have a bunch of stuff to finally upload onto the website, which then now we can. And what began as me just being super lazy is I just turned the Crom Comedy Festival Facebook into Crom Comedy Collective so we could advertise our shit. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think that might might actually just become like – because I put Dude Sweet on Spotify. It says Crom Comedy Collective. (laughs) Yeah, might as well. shit with IDT. So we're starting to build something. We're getting there. (laughs) We're getting there. It only took six years. Yo, here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is both like we put time into this shit, and if we have it, we might as well just keep putting stuff into it. So all the projects are coming in under. Yeah, it. fuck it. Like, why not? Crom like Comedy that's... Collective just has it's it's just the start. That don't mean we only do comedy, but it's like, hey, this is what happens. But we also branch out and do this. So I think I have it. Our two rules: don't be a dick. Don't be a dick. Make cool shit with your friends. Make cool shit with your friends. I Hell like yeah. It. I like it. Hell yeah. <laughs> dude sweet. Dude sweet. Uh, but yeah, dude sweetcast.com. We're on okay. like so many new streaming services. <laughs> Yo, yeah, and like, here's the thing. We don't care because we're not making money off of this. So yeah. We're not looking to monetize out the podcast or anything whatsoever. So yeah. just get it out there. Fuck it. If you hear it, just stumble across it. Listen, yeah. shout out, comment, like, hope you like it, whatever. Cool. Go check out the other shit. Maybe you'll waste some time. And we're uh, we're on we're on all of them and ones I've never heard of now because Anchor just shoved them all out there. So hell yeah. yeah. You know, the advantage we have is we're ad free. Uh, yeah. There are no ads. So if you want to listen to podcasts without ads, this, we're this podcast without ads. <laughs> <laughs> So it's definitely funny. not because no one's offered. It's, it's not even, of our principles. It, no, no, no. It's not even if somebody would offer. It's like, no, no, yeah. no, no, no. I just, and also, you know, it's, yeah. And it, like, I have a website, iandouglasterry.com. I spent eight hours together, not all in one run, trying to make the perfect website. And it broke me like physically and emotionally. 
And I just wound up with just like, here's the basic shit. I I wanted like this perfect thing, but I also didn't want to spend a bunch of money. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But so I just made this thing where it's like, here's the projects I'm doing right now. Here's all the old writing done. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I think, I think that's the plan is to kind of go underground for a while, build, 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 build. And then once we have the resources to actually, yeah put everything out there then just all at once just be like bombardment here's everything <laughs> check all this shit out so, i don't want you to hear no excuses about there any shit there's all the shit in the world right there for you yeah so thank you for listening thank you for listening we uh, appreciate it the or watching thing, if you're watching yeah, thank you the, the coolest thing you can do is just tell someone else about the show we're getting better at promoting watch out trying <laughs> i'm but, i'm deleting my social media so we'll see how that goes yeah. I'm gonna add more to make up for it. I'm gonna start. Yeah. I'm gonna start a TikTok where I dance with my shirt off. <laughs> oh, yeah. Please. That's just that's the just worst. Be, just be careful who you follow on that account because I'm not trying to have any kind of like, hey. So some yeah. questionable behavior has popped up, and now we Dude, have. I feel like even if you're not following those, they still pop up. Nice True. girls dancing around with no brassiers on. True. I feel like if you're over 30 and you're on TikTok and you're a dude, you're probably a creep. <laughs> I mean, I'm not on TikTok, but harsh judgment. When I harsh was on judgment. there, I was just, this is just bonus content right now. <laughs> we, this ain't even, no, we keep it going. We don't end this shit. We just keep going. This is like, this is like how my Mexican family says bye. We say bye for 30 minutes because we just keep talking about shit. What I want you to do though is have the music come in back after we got the plugs done. <laughs> Fade out and then it's into this. This is like a secret bonus track. Oh, okay. Got you. I got you. I use TikTok and all I did is I watched people uh, going into Goodwill and scanning things with like their phones and finding like expensive stuff and reselling it. I was, that was my porn. I was like, fuck. How much money did you get from those fucking textbooks? I mean, to be fair, I walked into um, a Ross today to see if they had a massage gun. They did not, unfortunately. But they had a pair of my black black and white cargo shorts, like Mark Echo Unlimited $57 shorts for $10.99. I wanted to, I could have bought that shit and resold it, but I was like, nah, I didn't. They didn't have the massage gun. The line was long. I wasn't standing (laughs) in line for that. But I mean, hey, if if you are trying to it there now, then this day and age, there are definitely resources to you can if you want to go hustle like that, you can make you some money, dude. There's people making lots of money. Yo, as long as you're not harming anybody, make your money however you want, because this life's already fucking weird. It's strange. It's rough. These people in charge don't give a fuck about us. So we got to do what we can to pimp this system. (laughs) Be a better, sweeter dude. Don't be a dick. Um, And we'll see y'all next time. Yeah, man. Cool (laughs) shit with your friends. Next, We'll talk to y'all next time. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. (laughs) Dude, sweet. Dude, sweet.